Here is the 2024 BMW M2 Coupe in black sapphire metallic over Vodernesca leather. This is Trek inspired because we have all the tuning that is needed with the Imperfessional Drive that unlocks 177 miles per hour. The cooling system is also track ready to get the zero to 60s in the low four seconds. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides, and I'm gonna go over the pros and cons and the problem that I have with the M2 Coupe and some comparable rivals, starting with full LED headlights that integrate into the more box and wide profile kidney grill, M2 badging, and the lower keeps the most aggressive stance for any two series with front parking sensors. You can option a 360 degree reverse camera. And when you're thinking rivals like Mercedes and Audi, or even Cadillac. This has the 3.0 liter BMW M twin power turbo, which is a twin turbocharged engine, inline six cylinder, producing 453 horsepower and 406 pound feet of torque paired to a six speed manual transmission. And you heard me right. This is a treasure because we have three pedals. So if you don't know how to drive it, well, you're not going to be unlocking 177 miles per hour with this example. We have a staggered wheel setup. This is a 19 inch up front, 20 out back, four piston brake calipers behind those blue brake calipers with a single floating caliper in the rear, slotted and ventilated for the disc. This is all track worthy. M Sport suspension with dynamically controlled dampers, M differential, 52 horsepower more than an RS3. And when you're putting that side by side, even though BMW says the numbers are higher in the 4.20 to 60, I'm sure this will compete heavy with the RS3 and going against Mercedes Mercedes, you're going to be spending a lot more money to get something that has the same power in class. Otherwise, you have to go to a C43 AMG and it's not going to be it's gonna be night and day difference in performance. And going against Cadillac, that's gonna have more horsepower and torque and a quicker zero to 60 and top speed, which brings me to the problem that I have with the M2 Coupe. It's great on and off the track with performance, which you'll see in the drive. The problem though, is it's not going to be the fastest in class. You can get a lot more faster vehicles. And when you're going to this route of performance and increasing horsepower, at the price that you're at, you're starting to unlock an M3 base model in which if you go up to the M3 or M4, you can unlock over 500 horsepower. Now the weight distribution is the same as the M3 at 52.9, 47.1. The rear gets standard LED taillights with M quad exhaust tips, making this not only track ready, but an everyday sports car packed into one. Quick release going into 14 cubic feet of storage. You get a storage area here with a bag holder. To split fold the rear bench, you do so in the back. And because I'm tall, I'm gonna just fold it out. And that's going to increase the cargo to the coupe. But this is an M2. We need to go inside, start it up, so you can hear that exhaust note. Way power seat adjustment for the front in the Vernesca leather. This is the cognac upholstery. The M2 badging illuminates manual cushion extensions, memory for the driver. Headroom and legroom. The M2 is going to be a sport car in and out. Gloss black is going to surround the top portion with the satin aluminum in between it and the air vents are going to bulge out. It is a driver focused setup with a large curved panel with two screens. This is a 14.9 infotainment with wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio. And let's put it into reverse so you can see the reverse camera that has the trajectory that expands out front and rear parking sensors. Dual climate control is standard. Working into the gloss black and the satin aluminum that opens up into a mini key fob. Just kidding. Into the key fob for the M2 Coupe. USB 12 volt leather around the shifter. 
gloss black elements is going to surround the matte black and the satin aluminum. It's going to be more sporty. It opens up into a medium-sized storage pocket with a USB port. Leather wrap steering wheel, multi-function with the M2 and M1 paddle shifts, which you can configure onto this infotainment screen. So when we push M1, this will change the configuration and M2, you can make it a little bit more sporty and aggressive. You can also change the driving modes right here for road, sport, and track. Gauge cluster is a 12.3 digital reader that can go through an array of information for the driver. I have it set for the horsepower and torque, and you can change that content out, putting your media or turn-by-turn -turn navigation or the trip. The dashboard is going to be flat with the Sensitech upholstery, LED interior lights, auto dimming rear view mirror with a moon roof, the door panels and dash configure it together with the Harman Kardon up top. It's going to be more sporty, Illuminated lights is going to be in this area here. One touch up and down for the windows with a long storage pocket and a beverage holder carved out. To go into the back, it's going to electronically move forward. Going into the back to fit two more, it's gonna be tight if you're tall like me. You do have a little armrest here and a little storage tray here with air vents. We're gonna move this back. The rails are where they need to be. It's just you kind of sit inward. So it's kind of a little awkward, but that's to be expected. The windows are large and you got an area here that you can hang up some clothes. Headroom though is going to be tight for anyone that's over six foot tall. 406 pound feet of torque. and a pretty decent weight distribution, so we can take some bins. And it feels playful. The steering wheel is light, so you can take turns a lot better. It's super aggressive. I mean, when you're putting this much power underneath a vehicle this size, it just makes it a little bit more playful. Now we're going to see it again. Here we go. It's going to pin you back in your seat. You're going to get the exhaust note that filters in. It's just a smooth driving vehicle. Track ready, it is. And you can do this as a daily, so it's just more fun. The heel to toe is very easy. You have the rev match, so that way you don't have to worry. If you haven't done stick shifts for a little while, you could do it. it just hugs the road. It's gonna take me to some pros and cons though. Starting with the pros is the value that you're getting when you go into the M2, especially if you are familiar with a manual transmission, you could have a lot of fun with this vehicle. It could be a little bit above just a weekend playful vehicle. It can be a daily driver. The suspension isn't that rigid. The seats are comfortable. 16 way power seat adjustment in the front. You get the large one panel curve screen. So you have the latest technology. You sit low to the ground, but even with the exhaust not in sport mode, you still can hear the exhaust filter in through the car. We're gonna have some deers cross us, quite a bit of them. First time I've ever seen this happen. Little Discovery Channel with the uh, BMW M2. <laughs> Some cons about the vehicle is because the price starts getting into a higher realm, it does start to touch M3 territory. Now it's not going to be competition, but you'll still have a quicker vehicle. And you have a little bit more room for the back seat because it's a sedan. Now the M4 will be night and day difference in pricing. This is just your regular drive, nothing crazy. I like that it ticks the box for an everyday and performance. So if you want to just hop onto the interstate and go crazy, you can obviously obey the speed limits, maybe take it to the track so you could really feel the dynamics of this vehicle because you're not going to have so much fun on a straight way. It's going to be whenever you're taking bins on the road. The problem that I have though, is when you compare it to other rivals in its class, they are going to be a little bit faster, even though this may have a little bit more horsepower than the Audi. 
And normally that's not the case when you go BMW. Usually BMW is the more faster variant. Because you're low to the ground, it is going to be something that you got to be careful with. It does have a longer overhang, but it's nothing going to mess up the weight distribution because you're so close to a perfect 50-50, which none of the competition will have that. But Cadillac does outclass it in horsepower in torque, plus the 0-60 to 60 and the top speed. But if I'm looking to get my feet wet with a true M vehicle, this is by far one of the best variants you can get because of how much you're getting, not just with performance, but in total value. Not only does the vehicle look the most aggressive in class, but it also has one of the most aggressive driving dynamics as well. So when you're thinking, well, it might be a little bit slower in the zero to 60 by a few tenths, maybe it's gonna be a little bit less in horsepower and torque in some of the competition, it's not going to be something that plays a factor when you're taking roads with bins in it. Obviously from a light to light, this is a manual transmission, so chances are I'll probably be getting in the four seconds zero to 60. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise, website, and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank BMW of Wesley. And I'd like to thank BMW of Wesley Chapel for giving us this 2024 BMW M2 Coupe for our car review.